it, so you shall have it. Say, so me, I already won. Confidently so again. Openly declare it. That is the testimony for you already. For the joy of bringing you into his presence this morning, this being the first Sunday in the month of February 2021, 20, will you gladly, taking nothing for granted, raise your hand and give glory to God? Join me, let's give glory to God. We don't have power to be alive, we don't have power to be well. He made all things beautiful, He kept us alive, He protected us, He sealed us, He brought us into the new month. He brought us into his presence. Join me, give glory to God. Give praise to him. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have given thanks. It's not my word as hammer. That's what the Bible says. It's not my word as hammer. That's what the Bible says, Jeremiah 23, 29. Barriers are broken by the word of God. Therefore, pray with me. Father, send your word to me in this service to break every barrier on my way. Pray that prayer right now. Send your word to me in this service to break every barrier, to destroy every barrier, to take out of the way every barrier. Be very confident in that prayer. God will send you his word this morning. God will send his word to you this morning. God will send his word to you this morning. Just one word that will change your story. Just one word that will turn everything around for you. Just one word. 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 Pray that prayer right now. Hallelujah. In Jesus' wonderful name, we are praying. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. Send your word to us again. Let your name be glorified. Refresh every soul. Bring to their place of destiny everyone under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' wonderful name. All the saints of God in the house say loud amen. Please get seated and give God a big hand. Welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. Say it like someone who made it. It shall be so for you. In Jesus' precious name. I welcome you also very specially. Today's great service. The first service in the month, Sunday service in the month of February. Which is also our breaking invisible barriers service. As it has been named, it will answer in your life. Amen. Say another loud amen. amen. All the barriers you see till today, you shall see them. When next will you see them? No. Say it again. Not just no more, but no more forever. Amen. If I were you, I would wave my hand and say bye bye to every barrier. Bye -bye. The prophetic focus for the month delivered to us from God's servant, the apostle by this commission, Bishop David Redipo, a little while ago, is faith secures fulfillment of prophecies. If that would be your story this month, say it with me right now. Faith is key to fulfillment of prophecies. Prophecies are fulfilled when faith is at work. Anchor scripture, Luke 145. Blessed is she that believed. Your faith 
is what gets you blessed. For there is which are told her from the Lord. It is faith that secures whatever God tells you. The word lifts the mouth of God. Considered already done. But it is your faith that secures the fulfillment. This month, every word of the Lord shall be secured in your life. Amen. Say another loud amen. amen. Our teaching series every Sunday is caption engaging the power of faith for fulfillment of prophecies. And we're looking at part 1C in this third service. Faith is powerful and not just powerful, it is for the fulfillment of prophecies. Now, God's word is the object of man's faith. God's word is the object for man's faith. What does that mean? Without the word, there will be nothing to believe. So faith cannot be put to use or cannot be in practice without the word. The word of God is the object of our faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things we are yet to see but is written in the word of God. By the way, what is prophecy? Prophecy is the unveiling of God's plan, which is in God's word. God's word is God's plan. So we can say prophecy is the unveiling of God's word, of God's plan and purpose for you as a person or for us as a people for you as an individual that's what prophecy is prophecy is the declaration of what god wants to do in your life god tells you ahead of time and this morning again he has told us what he wants to do with our lives he wants us to have supernatural turnaround. Say with me, I believe. Amen. Say again, I believe. Amen. I am going to experience multiple supernatural turnaround. Believe it, say louder, amen. amen. Isaiah 46, verses 9 and 10. I love these scriptures a lot. Remember the former things of old, for I am God. And there is none else. I am God and there is none like me declaring the end from the beginning that's prophecy declaring your end your good end from the beginning and that's why the scripture says though your beginning be small your later end shall be great in line with what god has declared you look small now god is declaring you great in the future yeah. say lord amen that's prophecy you look like a beggar now God said you'll be a lender and not a borrower yeah. that's prophecy say loud amen yeah. do you believe it yes, it will come to pass in your life yeah. it will come to pass in your life yeah. but scripturally we discover that there are two main sources of prophecy and the first one is the bible the bible is book of prophecy the bible tells you about who you are not just in the now but in the future the bible tells you about who you are what you are made of the Bible tells you about your potentials, your God-given ability. 
So everything you read in this book is pointing you to your future. Prophecy simply means pointer to your future. And this book is pointer to your future. Say loud amen. amen. This book tells you you shall be above only and not beneath. That's prophecy. That's prophecy of scriptures. This book tells you that goodness and mercy shall follow you. That's prophecy. Psalm 23 verse 6. This book tells you there shall no evil befall you. Neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. Are you saying amen? That is what we call the prophecy of the Bible. Pointing you to your future. Telling you about what God has in store for you. This book tells you they will come against you in one way, but they will fall before you in seven ways. Another loud amen. The Bible, book of prophecy, is pointer to your future. The prophecy of the Bible is referred to as the sure word of prophecy. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Sure. Say make sure. Uh, sure means it cannot change. Sure word of prophecy. So instead of waiting for one prophet to prophesy over you that uh, you have uh, some witches pursuing you, listen to this one. This is more sure word of prophecy. Where the lady shared the testimony in the morning, she said she was sick. And one day she woke up upon hearing messages that was being preached and she began to tell herself i'm healed i'm free and somebody just walked into the house and told her that she went to investigate somewhere and they told her that she's supposed to die and suddenly her immune system just crashed beware who speaks into your life until she contacted another world that she shall not die but live it's more than one year now she's very much alive you shall not die but live amen. that is prophecy somebody say loud amen. amen number two source of prophecy is through anointed god sent prophets god still sends prophet our way today a prophet is a carrier of God's word. A prophet is an oracle of God. One who speaks the mind of God for the hour. One who says, Thus share the Lord, inspired by the Spirit. I check through scriptures. True prophets don't give evil news except to the wicked true prophets don't give evil news to good people except to wicked kings if you check through the bible old and new testament prophets like elijah prophesied good to good people but they prophesy evil to wicked kings the same thing with jesus jesus prophesied evil to the Pharisees, to the Sadducees, and to terrorizing kings. But every good person Jesus met, he prophesied good to them. Believe only, your child shall live. Be of good cheer. Those were the prophecies that Jesus gave to people. So anybody who claims to be a prophet and is telling you that he sees death, he sees coffin for you, is fake. 
When next you go there, tell them that that's what I said. He's a fake prophet. Good people don't receive evil prophecies. Say loud, amen. Good people, good prophets don't allow negative words to survive. I stand before you right now this morning as a privilege son of the prophet in this commission and I declare that he shall be well with you. All through this year he shall be well with you. You will bury no young one in your family. Accident will never come your way. A thousand may fall by your side, ten thousand by your right hand, they will not come near you. In the first service, we had the testimony of a lady, according to her traveling to Benue, around the Gatu area. They just took her five minutes after stopping for a while, and suddenly the vehicle began to somersault. There were seven in the vehicle, other six were injured and taken to the hospital no scratch on her body that will be the kind of testimony you'll be sharing this year according to her before the accident or why the accident was occurring a, an invisible hand took her took her took her out of it the mess took her out of the sand i decree that no matter who is falling this year you will not fall with them no matter who is going down this year you will not go down with them another loud amen please so we have god sent prophets even in our time who tells you the plan of god and direct you on what to do like elijah he told naaman the leper go and dip yourself in water seven times and he did and he came out like elijah who told the widow of zaphirapat give out of your emptiness and she did and the whole year she was celebrating eating freely luke 4 25 to 27 and the scriptures that have been displayed on the screen there you can refresh yourself with all of that so in the light of this let's quickly look at the power of prophecies how powerful are prophecies number one prophecies are god's sworn verdict prophecies are not just promises prophecies are verdict a verdict is something that cannot be changed cannot be altered think about the judge in the court a magistrate court high court and to the supreme court once a judge is spoken it is final everybody carries their cap and on their way home once the judge speaks nobody raises his hand and say uh, excuse me uh, i don't like what you said that is God's word. It's a verdict. It's a sworn verdict. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 24. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. It's a verdict. For instance, if God's word says, that he will take sickness away from you is a verdict if god's word said by the stripe of jesus you are healed it's a verdict it's not subject to argument of what somebody else he said god's word is not opinion god's word is a verdict heaven and heart shall pass away but my word shall not go unfulfilled matthew 24 35 number two how powerful are prophecies prophecies are expressions of the size of god the status of a man 
is the description of the words of the man. Now, there are people who tell you something, you don't take them serious because he doesn't have a status to back up his words. For instance, somebody that is jobless tells you he will give you a job. You don't go around celebrating it because he doesn't have a job, so he cannot give you a job. But if somebody comes from presidency and tells you there is a job waiting for you, 4 a.m. you will wake up. You dress up, waiting for daybreak. Because the status of the person who said it can back up what he said. So prophecies are the expressions of God's size, God's capacity to perform. Say loud, amen. 22, 16 to 18. God was speaking to Abraham. And God said, by myself, have I sworn, myself. That means anybody who stands on the way, I will crush the person. By myself, have I sworn. And everything that God said to Abraham, God has already performed. To the generations of Abraham, including us. It is according to his size. So every time you read prophecies from this book it is according to the size of God so don't tell me there are mighty people standing on your way think of the almighty God who has already spoken somebody say amen how powerful are prophecies number three prophecies are the things which God can do and he will do God does not play with words. If he tells you something, as a matter of fact, it's already done. Every prophecy targets an incident, goes to make to happen something. Every time you are hearing God's word, it is for performance. And I tell you something, the word of the Lord to you this year shall be performed. Amen. Isaiah chapter 55 verses 10 and 11 for as the rain cometh down to heaven how many of us see rain falling at any time you've seen rain falling before and the snow from heaven and have you ever seen rain going upward how does it fall it comes downward rain comes down it water the heart make it to bring forth and board any time rain comes plants grow out please follow me very carefully any time rain comes what happened plants comes out when there is no rain plants cannot come out so god is using rain to describe his word verse 11 so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth when it comes down it shall not return to me empty please follow me very carefully when rain comes down what happens plants grow out when the word of god comes down what happens results comes out blessing comes out so what does that mean the rain that falls is on a mission so also the word of god that comes to us is on a mission when it is raining the farmers are rejoicing so also when the word comes believers should be rejoicing for anything god says shall come to pass anything and everything god says shall come to pass anything everything god says shall come to pass and what is he saying to you right now he's saying it shall be well with you yeah. another loud amen please yeah. but it takes faith 
to actualize every prophecy that is being fulfilled I mean that is being spoken or declared it takes faith it takes faith faith is magnet to fulfillment of prophecy an example is Mary Mary was a virgin who will give birth to Christ she was not married but the angel of the Lord came to say to her Mary you shall conceive and bring forth a child the Holy Ghost will come upon you the power of the Most High God will envelope you there is a seed inside you it shall be called the Son of God Mary said I cannot understand this but let it be to me according to your word faith says yes for God to perform faith does not query statements from God please follow me very well you had a testimony a little while ago that young man said he came to me last Sunday looking down it was as he said the testimony I remember his face he was looking very serious he said sir things are not working for me I said come on shut up you can't tell me things are not working and you heard him say I was eating his stomach I was chasing doubt from inside him <laughs> don't tell me things are not working there are things I will never allow you to say no matter who you are I have to teach you what to say God teaches us how to speak you have to learn how to speak for instance he said the inhabitants of the land shall never say I am sick Isaiah 33 25 shall never you are, there are things you are not permitted to say it's not our tradition in the faith they shall not say I am sick they shall not say things are hard Isaiah 33 25 so he said things are hard I said come on shut up things cannot be hard for you and finally I said to him go and return with your testimony and now he returned with his testimony you too will return with your testimony faith always say yes yes so Mary said yes even though I'm not married but because you said so yes even though I look sick but the Word of God said I am strong so I say yes I am strong faith says yes you look poor right now and God by prophecy is saying to you you shall lend and not borrow yeah I'm happy you got it right now what are you saying to him you better say yes that's how we said yes to be where we are today that's how we said yes that's how we said yes I have squatted with people before in single rooms but I said yes to greatness and now the greatness is manifesting say loud amen I've squatted in places where you line up to enter the bathroom in the morning some of you know what I'm talking about and when the person inside the shanty bedroom wants to punish you he will stay inside there he wants you to go late to work you'll be singing songs of enemy you'll be <laughs> provoking you then you'll be knocking the door come out now you won't become fish say no I won't come out there. maybe some of you experienced that this morning your story will soon change I say your story will soon change very shortly you will be entering a bedroom that will be answering remote control when you step in the tap will open by itself when you step in and press a button water will become hot and warm for you you will get there what are you saying to that yes are you saying it that's how it happens 
That's how it happens. I started pastoring church of four people, including myself, grew to seven, grew to 13, grew to 18, it grew again to 15. It was never reducing because I wasn't looking at the number. But ever since I knew that I will not die pastoring a small church because I said yes to God when he said to me little flock be of joy and excitement for it is the will of your father to give you the kingdom yes anytime God speaks to you something bigger than you what do you do yes Lord I don't look like it yes Lord I'm not married, I can't have a child. But God said, I will have a son. Yes. And it came to pass, and she testified, blessed is she that believe. So you have to keep your faith antenna on all the time. Anytime you hear something in the church that does not look like you, just say yes to it. And once you say yes, God prepares it to perform it for you. This year you will see wonders. Many of you will own miracle houses. One of my co-laborers, a few months ago, somebody just called him and said, I want to take you to somewhere. And took him there and gave him the key. He said, this is your house. Amen. This is your house. He didn't buy cement, he didn't buy land, he didn't buy air conditioner. This is your house. Just enter. All the documents delivered. One bedroom, no. Four bedroom, no. Duplex, no. Mansion. This is the key. This is your house. Because he said, yes. So when I tell you that you will have miracle house, don't say hey, somebody like me. Who go dash monkey banana? Uh -uh. I didn't know you have reduced yourself to monkey. God is saying you are a king. You are saying you are a monkey. So who is who is who is to blame? Just say yes. Just say yes. You will ride miracle cars. That's what prophecy does. And that is why your faith must link. Prophecy is about something bigger than you. And the only way to actualize it is just to simply say yes. And that's what faith is. Faith simply means yes to the word of God. Now, in the light of this, you have to first of all receive the prophetic word you have to receive it there are things you hear that looks contrary but if it is God's word that says it be like Mary I receive it I embrace it I can't handle it in my head but I receive it the place of faith is not your head but your head will oppose it your mind your intellectualism will always fight against the word of God facts in your head will always oppose truth in the book anytime you hear things that God is saying your mind will begin to look at your CV your background in our family has anybody ever ridden a car I don't think it can be me that is your mind rejecting it no cannot be and all you need to do that time is to say lord i receive it i cannot handle it in my brain but i receive it you have to receive it because what you receive is what you become matthew 19:11 that's why it's important to be praying lord anything that will be preached from your word today in the church give me capacity to receive it but jesus said to them all men cannot receive this saying 
except to whom it is given father give me capacity to receive your word give me the capacity to receive what you are saying number two you don't only receive it you believe it you believe it in your heart romans 10 10 with the heart you believe unto salvation mark 11 23 if you will not doubt in your heart but believe that those things which you say shall come to pass you shall have it and number three you have to work it out what does that mean you have to act on whatever god has said you have to act for example elisha told Naaman, go and wash in the pool then elisha went and acted acted by dipping himself in jordan seven times he acted and after acting god manifested without you acting god cannot manifest do your part if you want prosperity give and it shall be given to you don't say i want to have so i can give rather i want to give so i can have in farming you don't have harvest before you sow your seed you sow your seed to have your harvest and you sow more seed to have more harvest and you sow great seed to have great harvest simple it will not be given to you for you will give you have to give for you to be given as long as the heart remained seed time must go before harvest time some people say oh lord if you give me one million man you will get 30 percent of it because yeah, yeah you can't deceive me <laughs> last week i gave you ten thousand i couldn't find you in church again <laughs> so act do your part and god will do the rest philippians 2 12 work out your salvation say loud amen. amen and number four you have to engage in the fight of faith that is to challenge oppositions on your way you have to be confrontational you have to be confrontational fight the good fight of faith prophecies must be pursued to be fulfilled you don't sit down and expect prophecy to be fulfilled you pursue the prophecy you challenge the oppositions for you to see it fulfilled first timothy chapter 1 verse 18 and first timothy chapter 6 verse 12 the fight of faith ephesians chapter 6 verse 16 that's how it is been done say loud amen, amen. if you can lift up your right hand I decree that the word of faith I've spoken to you begin to germinate inside you now. Just as others have testified, you too will return with your testimony. In Jesus' precious name. Say loud, Amen. Now, we are looking at how to engage this same subject in breaking invisible barriers and let me begin by saying that barriers are real and you should not be embarrassed or intimidated by barriers because god already told us that there will be barriers god told you and me that there will be barriers so don't be scared To every open door that there are standing barriers. First Corinthians 16 verse 9. A great door. That's what many of us pray for. What did you pray for last Sunday? Great door. What did you pray for? 
What did you pray for? Did you pray for small door? I recall anytime we pray and said doors will be enlarged for you. Your amen is very large. So every time you are saying amen to open doors, you are also saying welcome to barriers. A great door. Effectual. But there are many adversaries. Very few adversaries. How many? How many? Many. So you cannot have great door without having many adversaries. Please note that on your way to your next level, you will meet with next devil. They are always there. They are always there. And why are they there? Somebody may ask. They are there to add color to your testimonies. Battles bring sweat, but victory brings sweet. They are there. If they are not there, your potentials will not be provoked. Until you fight and won, you don't know how strong you are. Every battle you face is a test on your strengths. A test on your strengths. A test of the strength inside you. And what more? Every battle you fight gets you stronger. Gets you stronger. You don't become weaker fighting. You get stronger fighting. The barriers comes as test, and when you are done with them, they leave you as a testimony to be shared. A loud amen. And that's why Jesus said, It shall turn to you for what? A testimony. What shall it turn for you? Say right now. What will you share later? Testimony. Share testimony. Barriers are real. But more real are the open doors. And more real is the power of God to bring you through. Say loud amen. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 to 28, Jesus told the parable of a man who planted his field and in the night, while men slept, he came and planted tars. And Jesus said, an enemy has done this. First John chapter 5, verses 18 and 19, the whole heart is full of wickedness. Everywhere, the whole world, light in wickedness. Psalm 74, verse 20, the whole world, light in the habitation of cruelty everywhere cruelty wickedness oppositions barriers hidden forces diabolical that will not want you to rise but beginning from now you are trampling upon them under your feet in the precious name of jesus the good news is this that you have redemptive authority say with me i have authority you have authority to clear off all the oppositions with the weapon of faith in your hand this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith taking the shield of faith where we shall be able to quench all the fairy that of the wicked one efficiency of the 6 verse 16 you have what it takes to subdue the enemy say loud amen make that amen louder Quickly, therefore, what are the exercise you must engage in to clear off barriers on your way? Number one, you have to be identified with Jesus. You got to be born again. From the class of defeat to the class of victory. Being born again simply means becoming a partner with God. 
a companion of God. When you are born again, you come into God and God comes into you. You become grafted in God. You become identified with God. You become a carrier of God and God becomes a carrier of you. Giving your life to Jesus brings you into partnership with God. And you cannot be a partner with God and end a loser. 1 John 5, 4. Whosoever is born of God automatically overcomes the world. The overcoming power is what you assess when you give your life to Jesus. Overcoming power. And this is that victory that overcomes the world, even our face. Who can be against you? Romans 8, 31. So if you are here this morning, you have not given your life to Jesus. Please get tired of losing. Enlist yourself as a victor get enlisted with jesus so you can enjoy a lifestyle of victory number two keep walking in the light of the word of god the more light you assess the further away darkness is from you light light Clears off barriers. The light shines in the darkness, and darkness cannot comprehend it. John chapter 1, verse 5. And what is light? Knowledge. Knowledge is light. Light is knowledge. Light. And light, knowledge does not jump on people. You have to purchase knowledge. You have to study. You have to read. Buy the truth and sell it not. Proverbs 23, 23. Read. Study. Search. Gain more knowledge. A wise man is strong. A man of knowledge increases strength. Proverbs 23, 24, 5. Proverbs 24, 5. Knowledge gives you more strength to deal with invisible battles. If you fail in the day of adversity, in the day of barriers, it's because your strength is little. The same Proverbs 24 verse 10. Go for more knowledge, for you shall know the truth, and the truth you know shall give you power to be free from satanic intimidation and barriers. Another loud amen from you, please. Go for knowledge. Go for knowledge. Light. I was illustrating, sharing with our officials last night. You see, old people, especially in the countryside, every evening you see them carry torchlight. They carry torchlight so that as they go, anything hiding can be revealed. That's light. When you carry light, Satan has no hiding place. Say loud, amen. amen. And the more knowledge you gain, the more enlightened you become. And from being enlightened, you become, you know, illuminated. You become light personified. Satan has no hiding place when knowledge is in place. Satan has no hiding place when knowledge is in place. Satan is displaced when knowledge is in place. Go for knowledge. There are many things you are crying about that you have no business crying about because of ignorance. Ignorant people always cry. Enlightened people always smile. Ignorant people always cry enlightened people always smile people ask me hey, why is your prayer usually short i tell him because i know what to say can't be praying long prayer i pray short prayer for people because god gave me other jobs to do i can't spend 10 minutes praying for you 
It's too long. How will I do the job that God gave to me? Short prayer. I have high blood pressure. No, you can't have high blood pressure. Go back for your test. And you come back and give me your testimony. Simple. Is that all? That's all. Amen. <laughs> I discovered in the gospel, Jesus never prayed long prayer for anybody. The long prayer he prayed was in fellowship with God. In the open. Go home, you are healed. Carry your bed. Carry your bed. Go, go home, you are healed. Stretch forth your hands. Woman, I lose you from your bandage. Stand up. Start going home. Receive your healing. That's what Jesus was doing for people. When you gain knowledge, your prayer vigor of a, oh Lord, save me, oh Lord, help me, will be gone because Satan will no longer be relevant again. When you have light, Satan becomes irrelevant. Say it loud, amen. Are you getting something at all? Go for knowledge. So me, I will go for knowledge. Number three, keep serving God at his interest and he will take the interest of yours serious. You are serving him. He's taking away the barrier from you. Number four, be committed to a life of prayer and fasting. I said in the first service, eating without limit will limit your destiny. Eating. Choo, 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 choo. Guguru, granite, bread, hot dog, cold dog, coconut, everything for your mouth alone. Coke, Fanta, uh, Sprite, everything. All kinds of Martina. Every Martina suits your body. Satan is very happy when you are eating. Satan is worried when you are fasting because he knows you are changing level. I have never seen a victorious Christian who is not given to prayer and fasting. Never. It's not possible. Prayer and fasting naturally breaks barrier out of the way. This week is another opportunity for you. Wednesday to Friday, 10th to 12th, we'll be having three days of prayer and fasting. Will you do it? I'm not hearing everybody. Yes, uh, this is the time Satan will be telling you that uh, you know your doctor told you you have ulcer. You have to eat. You have to be drinking. You better free yourself. You better free yourself. You cannot overcome certain barriers without prayer and fasting. This kind goeth not. I said by prayer and fasting, Jesus said Matthew 17, 21, Isaiah 58, 6 to 11. Number five. Keep speaking boldly, boldly against all invisible barriers. All barriers can answer the wisdom. Jesus said, Luke 21, 15, which all, 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 not some, all your adversaries shall not be able to get say or the power of your tongue is so massive the bible says all of them cannot resist it they are waiting for you to speak to disappear as soon as they hear the strangers will fade away psalm 18 44 and 45 as soon as they hear of me and from me you need to let the barriers here you are keeping quiet too much you are complaining too much as soon as they hear not before they hear the stranger will flee out of their hiding places they shall submit themselves to you so for you to subdue the enemy they shall be afraid out of their hidden places so get back home and speak get back to your business and speak get back to areas of your concern and address them what you don't address, you cannot arrest. You are too quiet. That's why you are getting close to the grave. You know they say, silence is in the grave. Speak. Speak to your peak. Speak to your peak. Open wide your mouth and I will feel it. Psalm 81 verses 10 to 14. Isaiah 54 verse 17. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. 
every tongue, look at that again, every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you will be the one to condemn them. As they are speaking, you are speaking. Tongue against tongue. Words against words. The battles of life are essentially battle of words. 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 If you don't know how to speak, you'll never know how to win. If you don't know how to speak, you'll never know how to win. If you want to win, speak. 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 Every tongue that rises against me in judgment, I condemn you. Whether you know them or not, condemn them. They are hidden. You may not see them. You just discover your business is not moving. You discover that all the effort you are making is not growing. Now, Heavenly Father, by the authority you have given me, in the name of Jesus, every force in hell, wherever you are walking from, I command you to be subdued right now. You speak invisible tongue to deal with invisible barriers. Say loud, amen. Are you getting anything? And finally, take advantage of the prophetic grace around you. There are prophets sent by God for our rescue. You cannot be associated with a prophet and not win as a prophet. Three million people were with prophet Moses. All of them came out. They came out of oppression. Can I tell you something? The reason God sent Bishop Oedipo as apostle over this commission is so that we can believe in God and believe in him. Believe in the Lord your God who shall be established. Believe also in his prophets and so shall you prosper. Everybody who believed Moses went to the promised land. Those who didn't believe him, they died in the wilderness. They died in the wilderness. Prophet Elijah would have met the needs of all the widows. But only one of them believed in him. Only one believed and only one came out. If anything failure occurs to you in a family like this, query yourself. Query yourself. Something is wrong somewhere. Something is wrong somewhere. You cannot fail when we are here. You cannot be harassed when we are here. I challenge every devil tormenting you, their game is over forever. By a prophet, he brought them out. By a prophet, he took them in. Hosea chapter 12, 13. Exodus chapter 3, verse 7 to 10. Moses, come. I'm sending you to go and bring them out. You have to bring them out. You have to bring them out. By the authority of Jesus that I carry right now and the backing of the unction, the back of this commission, I command that all barriers before you be scattered. A bigger shout of amen if you believe. Now, give God a big hand. It's worth it. Hallelujah. Now, first thing first. You heard it before. If you are not born again, you will suffer again. If you are not born again, you will suffer again. Get born again to reign again. Get born again to be in partnership with God for your victory to be ascertained and, you know, established. Everyone under the sound of my voice, truly in your heart, you know that you are not in tune with God. You know that sin has separated you from God. You know the things you do that are hurting your destiny. You know it very well. Even as I'm speaking right now, your conscience is telling you, hey, young man, hey, young lady, quickly respond to Jesus right now. Please don't harden your heart. And don't procrastinate. Don't say later. Do it now. 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 And I mean now. And I decree that the spirit of procrastination will not hold down anyone here today. All of you who want to give your life to Jesus, allow me and the church to pray with you right now. And all I want you to do is stand up, take your Bible if you came to church with any, and start coming to the altar here right now. You want to give your life to Jesus? Stand up wherever you are. 
you did that before but you backslidden make up your mind return back home come and join those who are already coming a number of people are already coming they have made up their mind that satan will not rule their lives again that sin will not have dominion over them again i don't know what you are still doing there seated when others have left you behind church give glory to jesus with a big clap as we receive them god bless you my friends god bless you my brothers god bless you my sisters don't waste time don't waste time don't waste time god bless you more people are coming i know you will come i've told god not to let the devil hold you down please don't cooperate with the devil stand up right now you know you are the next person to stand up you know you are the next person to come god god bless you i won't keep quiet i won't let the devil win your life now is your time today is your day thank you jesus i'm talking to five more people five more people who are seated you are watching me right now you are even wishing that i will stop speaking that i will stop calling but i will not stop because i know you have to be here it's because of you that i'm still shouting it's because of you that i'm still calling you will never regret it let him save you i made this decision several decades ago i've never regretted it i don't know who i'm talking to but i know i'm talking to two more people who need to be here stand up take this call respond to jesus and your life will never be the same again now i'm about to pray but the spirit tells me there are two backsliders here you used to love the lord you used to be very committed you are in all activities but your spirit is cold you felt you are disappointed and you felt you should just pack it up and god is saying it's not over yet god is saying i want to give you another chance i don't know who you are i will not say more than that if it is you stand up and come now this is your chance all of us out here please bow your head and pray this prayer with me i've done what i should do if you don't come the choice is between you and your god now say with me heavenly father i receive you today and your gift of salvation have mercy on me forgive my sins make me your child i return to you today to be restored to the faith take me just as i am give me a new name write my name in the book of life make me your child today and i receive your power to walk in your light to follow you all the days of my life thank you for saving me i am now born again in jesus name amen heavenly father these souls are saved and eternally so with satan having no more power over them in jesus wonderful name amen please open your eyes with a smile on your face say with me i am born again god bless you mightily our church officials will attend to you briefly you please go in the direction of my hand this way god bless you church a big hand for this wonderful salvation today thank you lord if you are watching us from anywhere and you made the decision to give your life to jesus you can quickly send a text message to the telephone numbers that will be displayed on the screen just put yes jesus and then we'll reach you shortly encouraging you to abide in the faith you are blessed in jesus name good news next sunday is our covenant day of fruitfulness and uh, you know god is taking us step by step last sunday open door and uh, today breaking barriers next sunday fruitfulness don't you like that god will make you fruitful this year yeah. you know what god is saying all through this year there will be no dry season for you yeah. if that prayer for somebody say amen to him yeah. i said all through this year everything about you will be green yeah. green 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 you will never suffer dryness this year the last dryness you suffered was last year 
you'll be growing green and greener and greener and greener. That's what fruitfulness is. Fruitfulness means green. Green. Green your field. He said he will send you rain in all seasons of the year. You will lack nothing good. And for those who need the fruitfulness of the body, believing God for your miracle babies, get ready. Come with your baby items next Sunday and watch the wonders of God take place in your life. You can as well name the children that you are going to give back to in their different gender, male or female, one or two or three. God will be waiting to manifest himself and to visit you in the name of Jesus. They told you you have some chronic cases, low sperm count or non sperm count or have no womb or no ovary. We have seen different wonders performed in this place. No fallopian tube, no ovulation, no whatever. And maybe they told you you have even crossed to uh, menopause or octopus or whatever pause. Eh? Or mama pause. God is going to change your story in the name of Jesus. Invite all of your friends or acquaintances to come with you. These handbills become authority in your hand. Anyone you invite will say yes to you in the name of Jesus. Meanwhile, remember three days of prayer and fasting, Wednesday to Friday. Powerful time. We'll be having intercession. We'll be blessing the communion. Everything will be working well for you in the precious name of Jesus. All your heart's desire for the month of February will receive speedy response in Jesus' name. To God be the glory forever. On Sunday also, we'll be having the communion shared, special communion service, and we'll be having water baptism next Sunday. If you are here to baptize with water by immersion, you feel free to come with your extra cloth for your baptism. If you don't have, we have customized, well-treated materials here that will take care of you. On Saturday, the Winner Satellite Fellowship, very critical, very crucial. A lot of people kept sharing testimonies how they opened their home to Winner Satellite Fellowship and God kept blessing them. Open your door to Jesus and Jesus will open several doors to you. Please be there with your brethren. Invite your new converts there and from there they will follow you to church. Jesus is Lord. The Word of the Bible Institute again opening if you have not attended believers, I mean the uh, Bible school, basic certificate course or you have done that, you need to upgrade to leadership certificate course in Goshen, in Kabaye, in New Karo. 8 a.m. is when it's starting tomorrow. Get all of your converts to be there. Pay for their snacks, for their refreshing, for their transport, and they will remain grateful to you for that. The Lord bless you mightily. In Jesus' name. Rise to your feet. And commence again for the week tomorrow. Six days of the week. Every morning, get fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. At the Goshen, or in any of the... Uh, other locations close to your home and enjoy the blessing of the Lord. For all of you following up your new converts, good things will follow you up this week. I say good things will follow you up this week. If you know any of your brethren that are, seems to be challenged and seems to be discouraged, please follow them up. It's normal if you are challenged. Please help your brethren up. Help them up. Encourage them. Let them return back home instead of staying out there being punished by the devil. The Lord will honor you for all that you are doing in that regard. And those of you who are helping people to come to church by transport, you will not miss your reward in Jesus' name. Amen. All who may need counseling and some little help, extra help from the church leadership, please be at the Kingdom Heritage Mother School to be with our pastors there who will attend to you. It's a new day for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you glad you came this morning? Those barriers around you are taken away right now. We are going to engage in prophetic war right now. You can't win without war. You have to fight. Fight. And I want you to put up the attitude of a fighter. A fighter is not gentle. You never see a gentleman in war front. They are always there looking tough. Stop. Identify yourself. You don't identify yourself. They shoot you first on your leg. Identify yourself. You don't. They break your hand because you are you are a nuisance there are certain things that have become nuisance to your destiny you have to rebuke them you have to tell them stop you have to tell them you have to tell them there are certain mad dogs stubborn devils that won't let you go you have to address them you shout on them you silence them forever that's what you are going to do right now so no room for gentle prayer help me tell your neighbor no room for gentle prayer meanwhile all of you who are in this church for the very first time 
Today is your first day at Living Faith Church Goshen. What a day to be here. Can I request you to allow the church to pray with you by coming to the altar? The center of the church is the altar. Come on here right now. Let's pray with you. Let's pray for you. If you came to church with cap, with bag, with telephone, anything you come to church with, including Bible, don't leave them behind. Come along with them to the altar. Come with children as well if you came with children. God bless you, church. Let's give a big hand to all of our friends who are here for the first time today. God bless you. Now, are you ready for the fight? Are you ready for your victory? Are you ready for the prayer? You have two, three solid minutes. I want you to pray like a soldier. Pray like one with authority. If you can, don't sit down at this time. I want you to stand as a soldier and pray this prayer. Pray with authority. Pray very loud. Pray very strong. Pray the prayer you know that God will answer. Raise your voice. Begin to tear down the barriers. Tear it down every barrier. Challenge every opposition. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against me in judgment I condemn. God has given me the mouth and the wisdom which all of you, the adversaries, cannot get say. You cannot stand me. I come against you right now. Every barrier to the fulfillment of my marital destiny, you must go. You must go. Every barrier of sickness to my well-being, you must bow. You must bow today. Untimely death in my family, failure around my home, failure in my academic pursuit, you must bow. Delay, stagnation, opposition, wickedness of the wicked, 